As a 3D artist, I love making minimal spaces, and they're surprisingly easy to do. Tonight, I'll be showing you how to make a realistic one from scratch in Blender. Let's get started. As always, the first step will be to find reference images. I used to think that Pinterest was only for recipes and makeup, but it turns out that's actually a fantastic resource for almost any kind of art style. Just watch out for the ads. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. Once you find some images you like, you can drag them into something like PureRef for easy reference later. I always like to start my interior renders with a dude for scale. The next step is to quickly block in your scene. This doesn't have to be a super technical process, but you do need the basic layout to work off of later. While this certainly is not necessary, I found splitting the walls into individual pieces to make my life much easier. You can also enable cavity and set the type to both. This lets you get a really good read on what areas of your scene are convex versus concave. And the next part will be a ceiling! Drop ceilings, also known as suspended ceilings, are incredibly cool, though notably hard to model. But fortunately, I've already done the hard work for you. Check out Uber Ceiling. It's free. Link description. Just append it, go into edit mode, and scale it to whatever dimensions you need. The scene is really starting to come together, but still looks a bit bleak. The next step is to look at the little things in your reference photos. For example, light switches, fire alarms, and outlets. You can either model these yourself, or grab my $6 interior asset pack from Gumroad. If you decide to cheap out, just kidding, and make them yourself, here are a few things that can help with the process. Firstly, write a list of all the props you will need in your scene. Second, when modeling, remember that smaller items need less detail than larger ones. For example, you could get away with a really shitty light switch if it's far away, whereas a chair might be a completely different story. And finally, be sure to introduce a small amount of unevenness into everything you do, even if it's just with a displace modifier. Remember, for things that don't need unique variation, press Alt-D instead of Shift-D to duplicate them. This will make your life a lot easier down the line, plus it will save GPU memory. And we are finally just about done with the modeling. And the next thing we will be doing is lighting our scene. This is really rather simple. All you have to do is make a light model, and then place an actual light above it. This light will give you a lot of control, and be less noisy than a mist of materials. As we previously did with the models, place your lights strategically throughout the scene. And heck, this is really starting to look amazing now. And now, before we continue, a quick word of guidance. If this tutorial is taking you a while, right now might be a great time to take a break, get some water, go outside, and as we all know, most importantly, touch grass. I find I work so much better when I split my work up into segments. Now that you're back, let's move into the next part, texturing. People often ask me, how do you do your materials? And they're shocked to find out that it's fairly simple. 70% of it is getting your base color right, but the rest is still extremely important. For this particular shot, I'm starting with a floor texture from Megascans. I'd like to use a color ramp to adjust the roughness to my liking. I also imported this drywall material from Megascans and applied it to the walls. Make sure to UV cube project everything. And now here's a little hack I use to make things a lot more realistic. Use an HSV node, adjusting the base color, so you can change the saturation and value. This is incredibly helpful, because getting the brightness right on the material is far more impactful than you would have guessed. It's at this point that I like to add a bit of unevenness to various surfaces. Next up, to create tinted areas on your floor, duplicate it, enter edit mode, and enable correct face attributes. Now raise it the tiniest bit above the original floor, and scale it however you like. This will serve as the tinted region in your floor. Now, head over to the shader editor, duplicate your material, and drop in a mix color multiply node into the base color. Now set that other color to whatever color you want your floor to be tinted by, and it will just work. As long as you have correct face attributes on, you can adjust your floor however you like later in the process. You can even have multiple tinted areas this way. Just be sure to duplicate your material each time. The mixed color node is set to multiply truly is legendary, considering that I use it to tint the walls and basically just about everything else in the scene to my liking. And now we're at a point where we can do some really fun stuff. The point of a liminal space render is not to just copy some image, it's to try some new and interesting things. For this shot, I put mirrors at either end of my room, 
creating a really cool infinity mirror effect. If you're doing the same thing, just be sure to increase the max light bounces in the cycles render settings so that you get enough rooms. I'd also recommend tilting one mirror slightly on the z-axis. And if you feel like it, now is a great time to add a few decals and details to your scene. And now you're already 90% of the way there, but if you truly want to push it into photorealistic territory, bear with me here because I'll show you how to do compositing. This is the step where we make our render look like it was taken with a real camera. A few of my go-to compositing nodes are blur, sharpen, and glare in that order. While there is plenty of room for air, just be sure not to overdo any of them. A little trick I use is to have two glare nodes, one being a bloom and the other one being streaks. The streaks node is subtle and has two opposite rays. In Blender 4.5 onwards, you can add a noise texture node and overlay that onto the original image to get camera color noise. I do like to blur the noise just a little bit to make the effect more natural. You can totally get more advanced than this, but it's a great start. Finally, set the output resolution to something terrible and hit render. Once it's done rendering, head over to the render window and click Alt S to save. Set the file format to JPEG and set the compression quality to something really low, like 60. Open the image and behold, you are done! If this tutorial has been helpful, make sure to subscribe and share your work in my Discord server linked below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one!